Do do do. Boo do do. Boo do do. Should probably give you a little more intimate look at the world outside. I think I will. On these mode. It's a little embarrassing. It's not embarrassing, but it needs mode. Oh. Let's see. That's a good spot for it. It's a good spot right there. Oh. 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 I am telling you. Thought I'd get out here a little earlier. Be uh, out here in time to... Uh, do some calisthenics, do my stretching that you know I like to do so much. <laughs> Posted a video. The last Tuesday I was out here doing a live video and I started, I was, uh, when the time to go live was uh, hit. Uh, yeah, happy Mother's Day to everybody, by the way. Happy Mother's Day. Uh, let me talk about my video first. And uh, the time to go live was came on, it became eight o'clock and I was mid stretching. <laughs> and I finished up a couple like feeble looking uh, stretches and was groaning during them. <laughs> and as I, as you know, I rewatch all these videos and I couldn't help when I was watching it thinking, there's some value in this content. I do think a stretching routine is important. But boy, this is just hilarious. And I started laughing when I watched it. I added my words as I did. And then I go, what music should I play? <laughs> I chose the Rocky thing. <laughs> it was perfect. Made me laugh. It's probably, might be the happiest video I've ever done. And I think, I mean, I made it because I think it was funny. But I, I so knew there would be a group of people that so despised the video, they would almost be disgusted and would get no joy. And they were there as usual. I had my three or four total haters with their fake accounts commenting mean things, how I'm gross and I'm disgusting and I'm pathetic. <laughs> and I'll tell you, I'm not gross, pathetic or disgusting, but it was hilarious. And I thought the Rocky thing was just the what is that, Ponce de la Resistance or something? I don't know French, but the 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 cherry on the top of the Sunday when it came to that video. And it made me laugh, and it's still making me chuckle. And honestly, I had a hard time getting out of bed this morning. Uh, I felt so good, <laughs> honestly, that it's Mother's Day, not Father's Day. And then I have my Sundays off my job at uh, Super Target and that I have absolutely, my mother passed about four years ago. Uh, miss her, I love her, and we might talk about that later. But because of that, and because I'm twice divorced, and because my kids are gonna be with their moms today, and because I'm off of work, I've got absolutely nothing I need to do. Uh, and it feels so good. It feels so good. And it was hard getting out of bed today and uh, laid there for a while and I grabbed my phone to see, I don't know, bad habit, but I do, see if anyone <laughs> said anything horrible on any of my videos. And I hit that video and the Rocky theme came on. And I'll tell you what, it inspired me a little bit. It inspired me to get out of bed. It inspired me, I don't know. I think Rocky is my all time favorite movie. I did not see I must have seen it in the theater, but not right when it came out. My brothers went with their uh, our grandma. Uh, I know I didn't see it with them. I don't remember exactly when I saw it, but it must have been after they saw it. I think it's my all-time favorite movie, and the music is so inspirational. And the end of the, the first one, or the end of the second one, when they got that music playing, and he's pressed, and everyone's trying to interview one of them, and he's just yelling... Adrian, you know, and I'm getting the chills thinking of that music. I don't know if you know the music I'm talking about. The, I won't even try to imitate it, but there's like a singing voice in the back and it's building up in intensity and it's just a, I think an incredible movie. And the guy made it on $600,000 in one month. And, uh, yeah. 
I've been doing great, Keith. Thank you. But anyway, uh, happy Mother's Day and uh, happy Sunday. It's Sunday. It's 8.05 a.m. Uh, uh, I did go to U of I. I did go to U of I. I thought I would sport up the morning because I thought I'd do some more stretching. So I wore a more sporting sweatshirt this morning. I looked outside. It was, hold on, I've got to get to my intro because i got to get to my coffee. I saw it was gray and cloudy outside, and I said, eh, maybe we'll do the uh, video inside because it's kind of cloudy. I said, nah, cloudy days are beautiful too. Uh, cloudy days are beautiful too. And uh, I don't think we'd appreciate the sunshine without the clouds. I know that to be true. Uh, so I'm thankful for this cloudy morning. Uh, thankful for the birds chirping. Thankful for the green grass that I might mow today because it needs it. And uh, thankful for my day off and thankful for all the mothers out there. So uh, anyway, yeah, this is Coffee with Ken. And this is a show I've been doing for quite some time. It's a show about me talking. It's a show I started several years ago when I was going through... Uh, like hard emotional times and uh uh it's a show that means a lot to me and i enjoy doing and makes me feel good and usually makes me smile or laugh gives me tons of content for all the tiktoks and uh reels and shorts that i post because i don't know invariably if you talk enough on camera something funny comes out every once in a while uh it is a show about me hey thank you so much hazel eyes for following the host as you all know, it's a show about me talking and sharing some of life's ups and downs. But for those that have been watching a while, good morning, Shannon, and happy Mother's Day. You know. <laughs> also did a video last night about this. About this. <laughs> I really should get into affiliate marketing because I think this video would have been perfect because I think a lot of people would probably want to have what I have in my hand, which I call the pot, which I could be called a pitcher, but I learned by Googling it is a carafe. A carafe to me is something I put orange juice in and it's made of glass. So I'm not sure if this just looks like a carafe to me, but that's just me. Uh, hey, CJ, thank you for following the host. But anyway, it would have been a great affiliate marketing thing. I posted it. I think it's a, probably a perfect little genuine commercial for, uh, 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 for uh, I don't know, this, because it's a good product. I think. My ex-wife got it for me. It might have been like 35 bucks. It can be bought on Amazon, and it's awesome. So uh, I like awesome products. So anyway, it's a show about me talking. And as you know, it is also a show about me sharing my love of coffee. And you can see, I don't know if you can see it, but the steam is wafting up into my face. The aroma of the coffee has hit my face. I went through a brief crisis of something this morning as I realized I had no cinnamon dolce. Then I thought about the contents of my cupboard and I knew I had the Sumatra coffee and I go, uh, no, it's not a good Sumatra day. And I thought about the other two coffees, a French roast, which to me just tastes like coffee. And I realized I still had some toasted coconut mocha, uh, coffee in there, which was suggested to me by my ex-wife. And that's what she's drinking. And I bought a couple bags a few weeks ago. And I think it's pretty solid. I mean, it's got coconut. Coconut's pretty dang good. And uh, she's a mother to my two beautiful kids. So I thought by drinking her coffee, or two of my beautiful kids, uh, by drinking the coffee that she recommended, it would be fitting on Mother's Day. Uh, so I'm excited to have my first sip. To all the mothers out there and everybody else as well, cheers to us. Uh, oh, I tell you, <laughs> it's a little hotter than I anticipated, but it should be. I heated my carafe up, uh, <laughs> and I uh, just poured it out of the pot, and it was steaming, but it tasted really good, so let's have another go. Uh, somebody asked, Corey asked if I put alcohol in my coffee. No, I do not. There was a time in life I probably would have, and the party would have started now. I mean, I was never a big booze drinker, but if somebody wanted to start partying, which meant get a buzz on, 
uh, and kind of a <laughs> hide from reality that is the world and had a bottle of whatever, whiskey or bourbon or whatever you might pour in. Or uh, I used to like, uh, uh, what is it called? Bailey's. Bailey's and coffee was real nice. I used to drink it at the casino a lot. And uh, uh, I used to drink it at the... I don't know. I don't know. Uh, used to uh, drink it at the casino a lot. But if I was with somebody and we were on vacation and somebody had a bottle of something and wanted to pour it into my coffee, I certainly wouldn't have said no. Um, and then that would have just started a 14-hour binge of just steady drinking and often smoking pot would have been I mean it was fun sometimes but then it started not being fun and I you know the buzz started making me feel like a loser and the high wasn't very high and uh, it started feeling like a low and uh, so I stopped about 18 19 months ago and uh, drinking and uh, I feel better you know I don't feel perfect <laughs> But I feel better and I feel proud and I feel good that I don't drink alcohol and that I face my fears and face my issues and face my moments uh, with uh, a clear head. Uh, I think I would have been in a lot of trouble over the last couple of years if I was still drinking and smoking uh, because I uh, had a lot going on. And uh, one thing that was kind of a rock for me was eh, I was proud of myself. And... Uh, I don't know. Acting like a teenage girl. I don't know. Hey, Ty. Am I acting like a teenage girl? Somebody said I was acting like a teenage girl. I don't know. I don't feel like I'm acting like a teenage girl. I don't think I look like a teenage girl. Maybe I do. Maybe I do. You never know what the kids are doing these days. Uh, yeah. It's interesting. Hey, so you said I appreciate the congratulations. It wasn't hard for me. It wasn't hard for me stopping drinking and smoking. It really wasn't. It really wasn't, and I don't know why. I mean, I, I, I've never said I was a alcoholic, but I did drink every day. I mean, I think I would have been classically defined as an alcoholic. You know, I think a doctor would have said, holy crap, you drink eight beers a day on average, sometimes more, rarely less. You're an alcoholic. And I was thinking, eh, you know, but I just didn't like it anymore. One day I didn't like it. One day I didn't like it. You know, I, I think I progressively didn't like it. And I progressively did. I was looking down at myself, sitting on the couch, slouched over, not happy in life or in my relationship or where I was at. And realizing the only thing that I looked forward to was drinking or smoking or both, usually both. And, uh, yeah. No, it's just, uh, it wasn't that hard for me. It wasn't that hard for me. And, uh, yeah, I was fortunate that way because I'm sure it's very hard for a lot of people. Uh, yeah, but I do like my coffee. Thank you, Tara Jacobs. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. It's interesting, and I hate to give him the exposure he doesn't deserve, but I, again, I have a few trolls following, and one of them's Tad Merrick that uh, my moderator just blocked. I looked up his account the other day to determine it was a troll, and he's got two videos posted on it of me drinking coffee, of me taking sips of coffee that he spliced into about 20 different me sips of coffee. I'm <laughs> going, wow. This guy's got not much to do if he's spent in, uh, uh, his days, I don't know, watching my videos to make fun of me and splice them up and put 20 videos together. It's probably a she. I'm sure it's a she uh, of me drinking coffee. But, <laughs> yeah, no, I know, Star, it does. So maybe I should change my name to Star. I was kind of thinking about it. I posted, like I said, for those that weren't watching, I posted an athletic video of me last night uh, doing some stretching. And I uh, thought it was funny, and I kind of was hoping I'd get some haters on there, and I did, and it was so funny. And I got all the negative comments, but I was laughing at each one because I knew it was burning them. I saw an interesting video. Uh, I followed a new guy on TikTok the other day. don't even know his name, but somehow popped up in my feed. 
and uh, it's super, uh, 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 super uh, motivational and seems appropriate and what I need, not what I need, but there's a lot of good messages in it. And it's almost like an AI voice talking. And one of them was, uh, and I'm not going to do it justice, but I'm going to give uh, uh, an imitation. Oh, all right, good job for you, Ty. Thank you. A great job stopping drinking. You know, I think you tell people you don't drink. And I'm not saying everybody should stop. I think everybody should do what they want to do. Um, I don't think drinking makes anybody better. You know, it make, doesn't make anybody better. I thought it made me better. I thought it made me the life of the party. Uh, what I realized is I'm uh, more social now and more outgoing and more positive and proud and authentic than I've ever been, and it feels good. Um, yeah, so good for you. What's the plan today? The plan is no plan. The plan is no plan. The plan is sleeping. Uh Make my coffee, do my coffee with Ken's show if I wanted to. Apparently I did. I'd like to go to church. There's a nine o'clock service that just seems so rushed if I, and I'm not gonna rush, so I'll go to the 1045. I looked at the weather, it's gonna be in the 60s all day, but cloudy. I'm gonna ride my scooter today. And uh, I'm gonna ride my scooter today and I'm really looking forward to that because it's gonna be beautiful weather for it. Just cool enough where I can wear my leather jacket. And, uh, yeah, Shannon, Augie's uh, uh, at home with his mama today. And uh, so is Eve, and so is Aaron, and so is Morgan. I uh, wished both mothers, both of my ex-wives, happy Mother's Day. Uh, felt good to do. Uh, felt good to do. I mean, they're the mothers of my beautiful kids, so I hope they have a wonderful, wonderful Mother's Day. Uh, Ian asked opinions on Andrew Tate. I don't know much about him. Uh, but he speaks his mind. He speaks his mind. And, uh, uh, he speaks his mind. And, uh, so in some weird way, that's kind of an inspiration to me. And don't anybody cut this up because I know Andrew Tate got in trouble for saying things or maybe got arrested for something. I don't even know what. But, uh, him being authentically him is sort of an inspiration to me, uh, that it's okay to do. Uh, that myself and I think his message would be vastly different than me and he'd call me uh, probably call me names he might be one of my haters uh, and that's okay uh, but he speaks his mind so uh, that's my thought on Andrew Tate and that's all I really know about him um, should I get him oh I'll definitely get him on Father's Day Yeah, I don't know what I'll do with him on Father's Day four kids like I said, I'm glad today is Mother's Day. Now, I love my kids to death. I think you all know it. Yeah, you're right about that, Jim. I and I. I love my kids to death. I'll tell you what's tough being a... Uh, uh, it's tough being divorced, I think. I stopped by my ex-wife's house to see my... Uh, actually, well, to see my kids yesterday. Uh, my babies. And uh, played with them. And it's... Parenting is easier in twos, and being a dad is easier when you have a mom there helping you out, and I'm sure it's true vice versa. I'm sure it's easier on the mama when uh, the dad's there to change a diaper or hold the baby or love on the son or what have you, and it got me kind of sad. I teared up a little bit. I cried a little bit uh, as I was leaving. Just not be, I don't, my wife and I, ex-wife and I shouldn't be together, uh, but it just feels nice being a parent together and it feels uh, good morning RJ it feels nice being a parent together and uh, it's a little hard and I'm sure she, I feel a little bad for her I'm sure her day would go a little smoother good morning Yvonne if uh, I was the, not me personally but you know what I mean <laughs> to celebrate with them and help with the kids and uh, what have you so, uh, anyway, let's have a little more coffee. Somebody commented on the greenery behind me. Yeah, the trees are beautiful. The trees are beautiful. The trees are amazing. I went to my buddy's, uh, was it last Sunday after church? Stopped by, and he's got this huge old oak growing up in the middle. And I said, wow, 
Was this here when? He, I mean, obviously, it was here when he moved in. He moved in 25 years ago. I knew it was older than that. It's the toasted coconut, RJ. And I said, this got to be at least 100 years old. And they said they had an arborist out that estimated that it was two or 300 years old. And, I mean, if, if that's true, it's so cool because it was there during the Revolutionary War. And trees are cool that way. And on my first honeymoon, I went out to Yosemite and saw the, uh, what are they called? They're not called the Redwoods out there. Uh, but it was amazing. It was amazing. Uh, they're not the Redwoods, but they're, oh, uh, those trees in Cali are epic. Yeah. Uh, what are those trees called? Okay, we'll put it past us. Um, I am coming at you from Naperville, Illinois, which is a town of 145,000 people, 35 miles west of Chicago. I'm Sequoias. Thank you, Shannon. I'm on my front stoop. It is peaceful. We got birds chirping. I live on Main Street, Naperville, Illinois, I like to say. Oh, thank you for the rose. I appreciate that. Um, I live on Main Street, Naperville. And it's probably this, this bit of pavement might be the quietest pavement in all of Naperville, even though it's Main Street. It's where Main Street, Naperville ends, and it runs into a little Korean church uh, which is, I'm fortunate to have behind me because it's got a little park and some trees behind me and uh, just a beautiful, quiet little setting of tiny little homes, uh, of tiny little homes close to downtown and one of the best downtown in the suburbs, probably the, the best downtown in a suburb of Chicago. And... Uh, uh, yeah, fortunate uh, to have found this place and have really enjoyed my time here. Uh, and I'm looking forward to mowing my lawn and doing whatever the heck I want today. Because, uh, again, it's Mother's Day, but it's Sunday. And I am uh, uh, don't work on Sundays, and I'm just looking forward to it. And it felt so good, again, waking up this morning and wake, going back to sleep and listening. I listened to some positive affirmation guy, but it's, there's also some weird droning music going on in the background that is very relaxing. I think audio is important or music is important or sound is important for our well-being. And I think if you have, you know, I watch some guys here on TikTok that are playing various audios and uh, it is relaxing and it is peaceful and it is numbing and it does put your mind at rest if you have the right music going on in the background. I mean, then there's times when, like, yesterday when I got off my coffee with Ken, uh, I put on my playlist and I hit shuffle, and the first song that came on was Motley Crue, uh, Looks the Kill. Uh, Looks the Kill. And <laughs> for anybody watching out there, and this might take you back to before a lot of you uh, were born, but that's a real rocking song. Uh, RJ, you're out there. Look up, uh, you probably haven't heard. Uh, look up Looks of Kill Today by uh, Motley Crue. I think it came out in like 87, but boy, that guitar just blows you away from the get go. And uh, uh, blows you away from the get go. And the whole song's just as jamming and rocking in a big hair, 80s sort of rocking way. <laughs> And uh, anyway, I don't know what my point was. My point was, I don't only listen to the mellow, put me to sleep music. And uh, my playlist is pretty interesting. I mean, I got like Gordon Lightfoot, and I got Motley Crue, and I got Metallica, and I got Alanis Morissette. So uh, uh, it is a face melter. What was that from? That's your face. What was that from? It was from a movie. Good morning, Sarah with an H. Marilee, thank you for sending me the roses. What melts your face? Oh, School of Rock. Wasn't it School of Rock that said face Jack Black and School of Rock? Great movie. It's really a great movie. It's so weird how time goes by. I mean, it came out probably 20 years ago. And, you know, you can bring it up to a 30-year-old and they'll never have heard of School of Rock. I go, wow, it seems like it just came out last week. It's a great movie. 
Uh, the weather's nice. I mean, it's overcast. Should I give you a little quick tour? A quick tour of what I'm looking at. Little houses across the way. It's overcast, but it's uh, pleasant. It's kind of a beautiful May day. Not a, you know, one of those picture perfect May days because, uh, yeah, because uh, the sun's not out. I see a cardinal in a tree over there. And cardinals are probably my favorite bird, and they're the state bird of uh, Illinois. And when I got separated from my wife about a year and a half ago, I was uh, had uh, friends that were kind enough to take me in. It was a very volatile situation. I didn't have any plans. I didn't plan it. And uh, uh, lived with them, and I, they have a nice basement, a finished basement with a washroom and one of those beds that comes out of the wall. And they were kind enough to let me uh, stay with them for a while. And uh, one of the neatest things about being there was they had an albino cardinal that would visit them almost every day. And albino cardinals are very rare. Uh, I think one out of 800 uh, cardinals are born albino. And most of them die as little baby birds because they're, I don't know, not camouflaged or because they're albino or because they're, you know, I don't think the albino is generally a strong trait to have in you. And so every, oh, not every day, but at least once a week, a few times a week, we'd have an albino. We, I was in their house, but I was enjoying it as much as anybody. She put out all these bird feeders and there'd be an albino cardinal out there. And it was really, really cool. And I felt so neat uh, that it would come and visit as often as it did. And I try and take pictures and it was hard, you know, I think you'd need a really good camera to zoom in close. I was trying to do it on my iPhone. And any time we'd go outside to take a picture, it would fly away. But it was really beautiful and just really neat. And I'd never seen one before. And I know some big time birders, uh, and birding's kind of an interesting hobby, that had never seen an albino cardinal because, you know, <laughs> you can't go looking. You know, there's no, you don't go to albino, you know, if you want to go see a duck, you go to a lake or a swamp or a marsh. You know you got pretty good odds. Of seeing a duck you could even probably go to where cardinals tend to be but an albino cardinal is so specific and so rare uh you know it's you can't hunt them one's <laughs> just gotta fly in front of you i don't mean hunt them like kill them but bird them if you know what i mean so i appreciate birding more maybe birding's an old man's sport i don't know if it's a sport at all but hobby I appreciate birding a little more and nature a little more and quiet times a little more and what have you. Uh, I appreciate, yeah, wildlife. And 10 years ago, uh, in 2013, after my first divorce, I moved into a community called Four Lakes, which is in Lyle, Illinois, which is uh, uh, probably about five, six miles from where I live today. And it's a really neat community. And I lived in a kind of a, eight floor building. I was on the seventh floor with a beautiful view of the south overlooking a lake and with trees. It was just a gorgeous, gorgeous view. And I lived there for four years and I had a buddy over and we were sitting on the balcony and <laughs> we were probably doing what I used to do at that time, which means smoking and drinking. <laughs> I know we were. And all of a sudden he goes, whoa, bald eagle. And I go, <laughs> Are you kidding? And I looked up and we were on the seventh floor of an eight floor building. So we we're pretty high up, but a bald eagle soared over and flew out across the lake and then flew away. And I was like, holy crap. You know, I'd seen only a couple bald eagles in my life at this time. And they were always in like uh, upper Wisconsin or, uh, you know, north somewhere. And again, I talked about it before, but when I was a kid in the 70s, bald eagles were almost extinct. Uh, I don't remember the name of it. We had some chemical that we used to use for something uh, that was bad for them and would poison them, and they were almost extinct. And uh, that bald eagle was the only one I saw for a year or two, but now I believe there's a couple bald eagles that have taken up a nest in the community of Four Lakes and can be seen fairly regularly. And I just think that's so cool. And uh, I don't know. 
appreciate the beauty that is all around us. Even this big old tree behind me. I don't know how old it is, but it's huge. Silver maples, and I've talked about this tree before, grow crazy fast, I think. But this one's probably four or five feet across, or wide, I mean, it's the trunk. So it's got to be a pretty old one. I don't know how old silver maples get. I believe one of the bad things about silver maples is they uh, drop all sorts of yucky looking stuff all over. Shelly, you said you, you have a bald eagle pair here. Where are you? Hello, Marcy, I and I. Thank you for joining Time Out, and thank you all for joining. Any of the moms out there, happy Mother's Day. And any of the people out there that uh, uh, whose mom they've lost for whatever, uh, your mom's looking down on you. A little more coffee to the moms. I'm going to warm it up. Would you guys call it? Okay, yeah, all right, northeast Indiana. So you're probably not far from where I am. Uh, but again, we would never... <laughs> When I was a kid, the only, the wildest, craziest bird I'd see is like a crow. Good morning, Just Todd. Thank you for joining. It was a crow. I remember going on uh, paper routes with my older brothers. They would wake me up. I kid you not, at four in the morning to wrap papers and go with them. I think they shared a paper route and they didn't want to do it alone. So they woke up their little brother, gave him a quarter. A quarter. A quarter. <laughs> to go on the paper route for him. And I'm not saying they should have paid me more. That might have been half their pay. They might have been generous, but they were desperate for companionship. And we had crow calls. I don't know if anyone out there has ever had a bird call. But we had crow calls. And they go, wah, wah. All right, that was a duck. That's a duck imitation. I can't think of how the crow sounded. <laughs> a duck came out. Duck calls don't attract crows. The crow calls do. And we'd get them kind of flying around. It was pretty cool. But uh, we never saw hawks, I don't think. I remember getting a book on birds of prey and wishing I could one day be a falconer and be one of those guys with the gloves. Yeah, caw, caw. Uh, the, where I had my bird land on me or an owl or something like that. And we never saw, you know, birds of prey. Uh, but now I see hawks every day. I've seen hawks take out, you know, come down and take out things. It's like... <laughs> It's a show from the 70s. Animal Kingdom. It's like Animal Kingdom here in Naperville. And I think, I mean, Naperville's a little bit more rural or more country. I mean, to call it country is ridiculous than Downers Grove. I'd say Downers Grove's a little more urban just because where I grew up, uh, and it's only 10 miles from here, but it was landlocked. And Naperville had area to annex and farmland to annex and areas to expand where probably nature did exist before they expanded. And we see a lot of coyotes, and we see a lot of, I mean, I don't know if I've seen a coyote on this street, but if I have, and it's the only street in Naperville I've lived without seeing coyotes. Uh, somebody asked, Shannon, what's behind me? Trees. Uh, there's a little Korean church at the end of my street. I don't know if you can see that. Is there a dog behind me? You guys are scaring me. It's a dog. There's a dog behind me? Somebody, yesterday morning, I go uh, live every morning uh, as I'm having my first cup of coffee. Good morning, Keith. I don't think there's a dog behind me. You got me scared. It's like sixth sense. I see dead people. Uh, uh, yesterday, I do my uh, lives usually early in the morning because I got to be at work at seven most days. Do you still, still see a little brown curly dog <laughs> oh. cut it out you guys are teasing me oh I mean maybe my neighbor's got a little brown curly dog I didn't see it I don't see it it usually yaps it usually barks a lot his name Riley maybe it came behind me uh okay all right well maybe Riley came out to pay a visit I don't know if he does it's usually a little wilder Okay, but if uh, I still don't see any dog. I don't doubt that Riley did pay a visit, but I don't think he's there right now. <laughs> if he is, he'll start barking at me or his mama will start yelling at him. 
because he barks a lot. Pretty incessant. <laughs> but uh, anyway, what was I? Let's drink some more coffee. Anytime I don't have anything to say, I drink a little more coffee. So it's about 8.35. I didn't know if I was going to need nutrients while I was out here or sustenance while I was out here, but I'm probably not going to open up the oranges or the donuts while I'm on my Coffee with Ken show just because it's late and I made it this far and it's Mother's Day and I want to let all you guys go and do your Mother's Day things and I want to get ready at a slow pace. I mean, I got... I mean, I got two hours till church, so that's really slow pace. She's doing his own child. He said he's not fun divorce. Tracy said, you sound like a male me. Love trees, birds, all the music, child of the 70s, not a fun divorce. Hey, farm girl, thank you. Tracy, I wish you were local. We'd go on a date. We wouldn't even have to like each other. We wouldn't even have to talk. Wouldn't even have to be a fancy day, but we'd have to be around people. <laughs> so I could tell them that if we got married, you'd be Tracy Tracy. <laughs> Although you spell your Tracy wrong. <laughs> I think I, I don't know. Could I, could I get past that? Or am I a purist of my last name, T-R-A-C-Y? Do I need the date to be, if, <laughs> for the date to be funny... Does it need to be T-R-A-C-Y, T-R-A-C-Y? Or could I be flexible and allow a, to date a woman with an E-Y at the end? Or could I accept dating a Stacy? <laughs> could I accept dating a Stacy just for the rhyme? I mean, she'd be so annoyed with me. I think my ex-wife was pretty annoyed with me. That's probably why she was my ex-wife. It's probably why both of my ex-wives are ex-wives. I can probably be annoying. We probably all can. I think that's why we got to find our evil. Because <laughs> if I'm not with the right person, and most people are the right people with me, most people get along with me. Uh, on live TikTok, now, I may be a little late. Uh, am I only doing coffee with Ken on the live TikTok now? I don't understand what you mean, Tim Hopkins. Uh, I don't know what you mean. Uh, I do do live coffee with Ken on every morning, pretty much. And hey, thank you so much for following me. I appreciate that. Um, but yeah, most of my videos come from my lives. Uh, I was thinking I was at a Starbucks yesterday or a couple days ago, and I wanted to shoot a video and it was with me with a prepared thing that I wanted to say. And I used to do a lot of those when I was walking, but I was walking all the time. So they were authentic at the time. I'd be walking. It was about a year and a half ago, right after I got separated. I was living in my buddy's basement. I had a ton going on. I was stressed. I was had emotions pouring out the seam. And I'd be out on a walking path somewhere and I'd be had this thought and the thought would come out. I'd grab my phone, grab my camera and flip it around and go, hey there. And my thought would come out and I would say, have a wonderful day. And I'd click and that would be a video. Uh, I seem to get those out on my live videos now. So I'm not walking with, you know, <laughs> it's funny. I do talk to myself all the time. Well, where's the dog? Riley just crossed the street. Riley shouldn't be crossing the street. Again, his mama yells at him. I'd be surprised if his mama didn't come here. Oh, thank you so much, farm girl. I so appreciate you uh, joining. Hey, a happy Mother's Day to you. Anybody that's new that's tuning in that's a mom or has a mom or uh, uh, has a mom that's passed, happy Mother's Day to you. I think Mother's Day can be a day we all celebrate. Uh, <laughs> we all had moms, you know. And, uh, uh, I don't know. I miss my mom. Uh, she was a really loving mom. Uh, I think she really loved me. I think we were both very similar and both kind of kooky and both, both very passionate and both very emotional. And, uh, uh, yeah, uh. Yeah, and uh, she passed from Alzheimer's uh, about 
should know. Three, I always say three or four years ago because I don't totally remember if it was January 2019 or January 2020. I was going to say I should look it up, but I don't know if it really matters. Uh, but either way, she died of Alzheimer's or had Alzheimer's. I don't know if you die of Alzheimer's. Uh, but it's certainly a degenerative disease. And she was always a little goofy and quirky, kind of like me. And uh, uh, I remember she'd ask strange things from time to time. And the first 9-11, like the day the planes were hitting, I was watching the news at my mom's house. And she asked me if I played the piano. I go, Mom, do I play the piano? I mean, I'm your son. I'm in your house. Seems like you'd know if I played my piano. And I think that might have been the first time she said something. Like the first strange thing she said that I noticed. That I'm going, huh, that doesn't seem... Uh, uh, that seems odd. And uh, I think it was odd. And over the next, you know, it really started showing up uh, around 2010 or so. And uh, slowly and slowly, it's a, you know, it's a kind of tough thing to watch. But in some ways, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, it's coming and the time's limited. And uh, it gives you time to come to peace with your own mother's passing. Because for anybody out there, you know, your mother could be gone today. And you wouldn't have the opportunity to say you love her or goodbye to her one last time. I mean, it's Mother's Day, so hopefully you will. Uh, but in some ways, you know, you see the clock ticking on your mother. And uh, 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 gives you a chance for some closure. And I found her funeral more peaceful for me uh, she was ready to go and uh, 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 she was ready to go and uh, so I found it almost peaceful and versus if it was a sudden surprise and death because uh, uh, losing your mom I you know again for me I have a different experience than most people do I'm sure a lot of moms die of heart attacks or what have you and that's wait a minute, I wasn't ready for that. I had an opportunity to be uh, ready. And uh, it's kind of weird, and it's just kind of what life does. My neighbor's sweeping her driveway over there. She's a hard-working lady. Hi, Janice! Should you be sweeping your driveway? I'm doing a live video, Janice. You're not going to want to come over here and talk. She's a shy woman. She would have freaked out. I should have let her get on camera. She would have gone, ah! She sweeps her driveway. In the fall, she breaks her leaves on her, or on her grass like every day. <laughs> every day. You know, she don't like, or pulls every dandelion. She's retired. Uh, she's retired. I won't tell you. Uh, why can't she sweep her driveway? She has a medical condition. No, I know. I love that she keeps busy. Uh, but she had a... I don't want to talk about my neighbor's uh, uh, medical condition, but she had a medical scare a couple weeks ago. So that's why. Yeah, no, I know she loves to be outside. She's a great woman. Uh, but again, she had a medical scare. So I wasn't sure she should be sweeping her driveway. I don't think she should be, honestly. But who am I to judge? But uh, anyway, it's about 8.45. I've been talking for 45 minutes. I've so enjoyed this morning. Uh, it always feels good to uh, chat with you all and uh, spend a little time with you all and to share some coffee and share some of my mornings with you. And I'm looking forward to my day. I had an awesome night's sleep. I got my calendar calendar my day calendar my day path uh yeah Shelly she seems to be but I'm telling you 
it was a serious medical scare from what you said. Like the most serious kind. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> but she's out sweeping. Uh, thank you, Shannon. And uh, I'm looking forward to my day, and I'm looking forward to heading to church and eating my oranges, drinking my water, finishing my coffee, eating some donuts. Uh, probably going to find my way to Starbucks today and uh, uh, post a bunch of videos, hopefully some funny ones, hopefully some inspirational ones, hopefully some ones that have some value. So uh, I'm going to leave you with that. I hope you guys have an awesome, awesome day. One more time, happy Mother's Day to all of you out there. I so appreciate you for watching. I hope you have an awesome, awesome day. I hope you're feeling good. I hope you're loving yourself. I hope you're forgiving yourself. And as always, I hope to talk to you soon. Bye-bye.